South Asia has been suffering unseasonably hot weather in recent months. In April, some places in India recorded their highest temperatures ever for the time of year. International researchers say such heat waves are 30 times more likely to happen because of climate change. Greenpeace India says global heating is not only causing more illness and deaths, it is also leading to crop failures and food insecurity. DW's Munir Chadri has been speaking to farmers in Maharashtra state in western India. They told her they have never experienced weather patterns as extreme as they are now. Most stretches of land in Vidarbha, a region in the western state of Maharashtra, look like this during the summer months. Several districts here are categorized as climate change hotspots. Soaring temperatures and the shortage of water makes life difficult for the millions of farmers who live here. Pandurang Karve says this year's heat wave is terrible and it's almost impossible to work in these conditions. He says it's not just farmers' productivity, but also how much they produce that is impacted. Tiny organisms which live in the soil make it fertile. If it gets too hot, the organisms are affected. If they are wiped out entirely because of such heat, the land will eventually become barren. Fruit farmer Gajanan Puri also says he has never experienced such blistering heat, which has destroyed the orange plantations for which this area is best known. He adds that the region has been recently prone to sudden weather changes which affect people's work and income. The weather patterns here have become erratic. Last year it suddenly rained very heavily, destroying our crops. As farmers here, we are completely dependent on nature for farming. When there is a natural calamity, it affects our yield. The monsoon rains are vital for crops in India. This year, the rains have been delayed here. The region of Vidarbha, economically dependent on agriculture, is highly sensitive to climate change. Intense heat, long dry spells, unseasonal hailstorms and changing rain patterns impact the process of farming and the crop yield all year long. Rajendra Petkar, an agriculture expert, says fertility of soil has rapidly degraded because of these changes. Mostly rising temperature. Over the years, we have seen that the rising temperatures and later monsoons are two of the biggest problems affecting Indian agriculture. Farmers here are very dependent on the rains, and then such delays affect production. Petkar raises awareness among farmers on best agricultural practices and helps them implement measures to cope with climate change. What is clearly needed is for policymakers to strongly intervene to mitigate the impact of climate change. For the farmers toiling in the scorching sun, there is no time to waste. Though they are at the mercy of global weather changes, they cannot give up as they struggle to make a living. For more, we are joined by Roxy Matthew Cole at the Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology. Roxy, last year in parts of India, farmers talked about too much rain. Now it's too much heat, and this has to do with climate change. Tell us more. Yes, we are seeing the devastating impacts of global warming, particularly in these regions of South Asia and India, which is quite sensitive to changes in temperature. As a result, we are seeing monsoon patterns changing. As global warming increases, as temperature increases, warmer air can hold more moisture for a longer time. So it doesn't rain for a long time, but when it rains, it powers and dumps all that moisture in a few hours to few days time. So we see droughts and floods happening in the same season or in one year drought and in the next year flood. So this year we were waiting for the monsoon and, but the monsoon is sluggish so far. The Indian Med Department has forecasted a normal monsoon, but so far there is a rainfall deficit. So we see, we saw a huge heat wave hitting India and Pakistan during March, April, May. It's not a one day heat wave or a one month heat wave, season long heat wave. Along with that, we see a season long rainfall deficit also. During March, April, May, the, the entire Northwest India and Pakistan went through a rainfall deficit of 60 to 90 percent. This is like mm. a perfect scenario of a prolonged mm. event where multiple extremes overlap, and that's happening in India. 
I wonder, are we past the point of prevention, and now it's really a question of mitigation for India when it comes to these extreme weather patterns? Right. We, we, or we are already seeing the impact of that one degree Celsius change in global temperatures. There is a 50 percent increase in the number of cyclones in the Arabian Sea, hitting the west coast of India and parts of uh, um, the Arabian Peninsula as well. And there is a threefold rise in extreme rainfall events across India. And the temperatures, the heat waves are also rising. And in the ocean we see, in the nearby seas, we see marine heat waves, heat waves over the ocean hitting the marine ecosystem and the corals and the fisheries. So we have reached a point we need urgent action. And the IPCC report shows that despite of the commitments the, from different nations, we are already hitting 1.5 degrees Celsius between 2020 and 2040, and 2 degrees Celsius between 2040 and 2060. And the impact of this 2 degree change is unimaginable even for a scientist like me. Right. And so um, India disappointed many people in the most recent climate change summit in Glasgow. Uh, do you think the country should be doing more? My take is that all countries should do more. In fact, US, Europe, Russia, Japan, all these countries have historically emitted to a point that we reached at one degree Celsius. Now, China and India has joined the bandwagon as well. Now, India has committed large, but it has to follow up on those commitments. It has already uh, brought from zero to 100 giga, uh, it has committed about 100 gigawatts uh, of solar energy by 2023. It has reached up to 50 gigawatts by 2021, which is a huge leap, but we need to follow up further on that, on those commitments. But it's a global effort. It has gone beyond the level of an individual or a state or a country. Globally, we need a collective effort in terms of mitigating or reducing these emissions. And we also need adaptation at a local level. That is one place where if global commitments fail, that's one place where we uh, on paddle that we have to work out. Because even though global, global warming or climate change is global, right. the impacts are, that we feel are mostly local. So we need local adaptation measures as well. Got it. Roxy, Matthew, Cole, thank you so much for joining us.